Hello everyone. In this movie I will show you how to do the DPF regeneration. So I know that there are many tools available on the market, but for those of you that never did the regeneration, I will show you how to use the, this is a iCarsoft BMM version 2.0. The second tool which I will show you, it's uh, this. The DIS, it's the firmware, not firmware, software. It's actually firmware software that's a virtual machine. So basically what you need is a laptop. For this one, you don't need a laptop. What will be the advantage of the DIS? It's that uh, basically it can not only show you the faults, but also can give you some advices how to solve the issue. So that's the reason why I got both diagnostic tools. I know that there are many more. I did test a few of them and they didn't work. So those definitely work. Now, I will post the link to iCarsoft BMM 2.0 and also this in the description. For the this, I would recommend to buy from BM Cables. This is, um, those guys, they basically making the very good wizard where you don't have to set up your virtual machine. You don't have to, you don't do anything. You basically run the setup and set up everything for you. So this is the reason why I recommend them because it's easy in use and the newer version of the cable cover all BMWs. So it's pretty, pretty good. Anyway, um, before you will do regeneration, you have to make sure that you don't have any fault codes related to fuel injectors, uh, related to glow plugs, related to glow plug module, um, the thermostat, EGR, um, and also back pressure sensors. Because if any of those are faulty, then your regeneration will work, but it's gonna be for a short time and then your DPF will be clogged very quickly. And you don't want that. So first you have to make sure that everything is working fine. So what you're doing, you're going to the diagnostic. Then in diagnostic, you're going to BMW. Now, if you will buy this tool, make sure to make the upgrade following the instruction provided with the tool. Because when I bought this tool, the version was, I think, 2.0 or something and it didn't it didn't connect with the car properly so make sure to do upgrade first now we're going here and this diagnostic work in the way where you can choose the x series which is x3 weirdly it's separate from any other car and then any other bmw the one which i'm working right now on is bmw 5 series with the engine 2.0 so, as you saw, there was a smart scan, which means that everything will be scanned manually, or you can choose this by yourself. I'm choosing the smart scan because basically it's reading all the components in your car and uh, all the fault codes. So it's pretty straightforward, easy in use. And this diagnostic tool, same as uh, these, both can perform much more than just DPF regeneration. Just to let you know, you can do like everything, mainly airbags. I know that some of the diagnostic tools doesn't allow for erasing the airbag errors. So those, easy, they just they just can do this easily, yes. So I did pause in second because it's taking some time and I don't want this movie to be too long. But to be honest, this is much quicker than uh, DIS. So if you're looking for something for a quick job, then definitely this is, this is what you want. This will take much more time. So we're going to um, these electronics and here we're going to read the fault codes. So in my case, there are no fault codes, which means that it's brilliant, I can do the re regeneration. If there were any fault codes, what I would recommend, is like here you can read and here clear. So I would recommend to clear the fault codes, then do a small drive and see which one of them will come back. So you, you will know what you have to address before regenerating of your DPF. Now I mentioned the airbags. This is where you can test the airbags. You see the SRS. And basically you can read the fault codes. If you will have any issues, then you can see them here and then choose clear the fault codes to erase. So now we're going back. We know that everything is fine with the car. So we're going exit and we're going to the main screen. So with main screen, we now have to go to the service. And as I mentioned, plenty functionality, but we're going to DPF. So we're choosing DPF, BMW. You see, this is what I said, the old version. 
but this old version doesn't really work, so you're choosing the newest one. Yeah, smart scan, ignition on, the key is on, yes. And then you can have description of the service, then you can have description of regeneration and also perform. So we're gonna perform. So this is explanation. What can, how you can diagnose that you got problems with DPS. So lack of power, this is one of the main, main ways how you can see it. And then we're choosing request the regeneration. So we need to have at least 10 liters in tank. We need to drive because this is dynamic regeneration. This is doing also dynamic. Dynamic, it means that you have to drive your car with speed, um, like they saying 50 miles per hour, 60 kilometers, or that was 50 kilometers. Anyway, what I would recommend, if your DPF is very heavily clogged, don't go above 2000 revs. I know that they saying that you should go above it, but don't go above it because you don't want to create too much pressure because this can create more pressure on your turbo and also a mind manifold intake. You don't want that. So basically, if your DPF is really clogged, you don't have power, go with speed with revs of uh, like 2000 revs. They saying also about the speed, but to be honest, I've been traveling in the traffic, the small traffic, where everyone was going with the speed like 20 miles per hour, and uh, it was still doing regeneration. So as long as you got revs and the uh, car is just, you know, have some weight by driving, then you should be fine. So, okay, we got 10 liters. So we need to remove the key. The key is gone. Now we need to wait 30 seconds. So after those 30 seconds, we got information that request has been accepted. So that's good. Now we need to press OK. Sorry, it's losing the focus. So it is saying that we need to start the engine, as you can see. I will try to, it's not easy, with one hand. And press OK. So now we need to drive for 20 minutes at least, half an hour, uh, with revs 2000 and higher, and this should regenerate the DPF. Now I'll show you how to do the same thing using this. Now the other way of doing DPF regeneration is by using this. So we have to click here. If you can see, it's diagnostic. It's over there. So by choosing diagnostic, we have to select the model of the car that we have. So. I will be regenerating again, it's a BMW 2.0 diesel, so I'm choosing 5 series and then as you can see E60, E61. So we're going next. I will start the engine for some reason on this machine, it doesn't, it is saying that I got too low voltage for diagnostics, so I have to start the engine for initial diagnostics, so if you have the same issue then this is what you need to do. Now you click yes because you want you want car to be diagnosed properly before you can do regeneration because basically if you're not gonna do diagnostic then you cannot choose the options so at the moment I will pause the movie and uh, this will just diagnose my car so after diagnostic I will start recording again so after this completed the diagnostics we have to click next you can see this here in the bottom corner so we choose next It is slower, it's what I said. It's not, not as quick as uh, as the iCarsoft. So I don't have trailer, I don't have anything like that. So we go here to functional selection, which is over here. So we click here. Then we have to choose, let me see, um, service functions, then drive. I hope you can see everything that I see because basically when I'm recording the phone is uh, covering what I see so it's kind of harder then diesel electronics then we have on the right side oh, let me see what is it particular filter it's the second from the bottom now if you will be replacing the DPF 
then this is what you have to do. If this is a regeneration which you want, then we're choosing regeneration. And then we have to click on test schedule, which is over there. So we choose test schedule. And now this is added to the test schedule. So we click next, which is uh, on the here, on the right corner. And now there is a procedure for DPF regeneration. So it's explanation. We did test. So terminal is on. That's fine. The vehicle is okay. So we choose yes. If you can see, I'm choosing yes. Sorry, it's bright day today, so it's a lot of reflection. I will try to maybe have this under this angle. So yes. Okay, we got 10 liters. So basically this is the same procedure that over there, like on the iCard drive. Now, iCard, so sorry. Now one for requesting of the regeneration. So we go next. Yes. The regeneration has been successfully requested, so that's really good. So we go next. Now I think we'll have to turn off the engine. Come on. Yeah, switch off the terminal. So I just switch off the, the terminal, I remove the key. Now go next. The vehicle is fine. So again, it's next. And now we need to wait 30 seconds. So iCarsoft was counting those 30 seconds, this doesn't. But it's fine because if you click next, it doesn't, doesn't work. So it's still counting those 30 seconds. So I will make the pause. So after 30 seconds completed, now it is saying that we need to start the engine. Oh, sorry, put the key first. <laughs> now start the engine. Yep. Now we choose next. Now, what is the weird thing? It's like iCarsoft sometimes, depending on the vehicles, it is actually giving you the status of regeneration, like here. You see, this one is saying regeneration enabled and then regeneration not active. So when you will be driving um, and the car will met the specification for regeneration, you will have here information enabled or active, sorry, it's gonna be active. So it's gonna be enable and then active. So. I use few and I use the regeneration from iCarsoft on few cars already and I've seen that on 3.0 I actually had this screen. So depending on the car which you are using, you might or you might not have the screen on iCarsoft. So anyway, now what you need to do is just drive your car um, until active, like let's say after half an hour of driving will become not active and then you can stop the car. Uh, after stopping the car, keep in mind that the engine have to cool down, same as the turbo. So I would recommend to wait something like two minutes and then switch off the engine, disconnect your diagnostic tool, and then you should be able to drive it fine. So I hope this movie will be useful for you. I hope it will help like the previous movies. Um, if you like the movie, please click like button. If you don't like, well, you have to click not, not like or just ignore it. It's up to you. Anyway, I'm really grateful for watching my movies. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, I wish you a good day.